Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Josh, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, uh, to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror and sci-fi, and anything else that I think is groovy. I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offering, content for the blood god. On with the show. Wandering the wasteland is never safe. That's no matter how experienced or well-armed you are, there's always a chance your life could end early, be it from wild animals, other people, or the environment. But there's something a little different about this universe, and that's the added threat of ghosts, eldritch creatures, and what could be living mannequins. Before the Great War, mannequins were used primarily by retail stores, galleries and museums, the remnants of which can be found 200 years later still standing in their original location. However, not all mannequins have stayed put and there's a few theories as to why. Mannequins can be found in really unusual locations, bedrooms, bathrooms, waiting rooms and hallways. These mannequins must have been moved by survivors lonely people who needed something that at a glance could pass for a human and this is a traditional remember an i am legend uh dude was talk uh, he had uh, mannequins placed uh, around stores that he went to often like the video store when he went to rent a movie um and he was like talking to the mannequins and everything well trope think of i am legend or the last man on earth both characters are extremely mm. lonely so in order to cope they start talking to mannequins. On the other hand, survivors, raiders in particular, have used mannequins for a different purpose, and that's to give the false impression that their group is much larger than it actually is. It's a defensive tactic to make other groups think twice about attacking. Yeah, because mannequins Yet, are creepy mannequins in general. can also do the opposite. By placing them in windows and vulnerable positions, they can lure people into coming closer, ignoring traps and tripwires along the way. That explains why most of the mannequins are no longer found at their original location. However, there is one encounter that might be connected to something unnatural, something not as simple as survivors getting lonely or raiders setting traps. In Far Harbor, southwest of the Fringe Cove docks, there's yeah. a shipwreck. Several mannequins are seen floating on the surface. More watch from the windows. Another lays in an open coffin. And in the main cabin, a lone mannequin clutching a wooden board stands over a human skeleton. We have no way of knowing what really happened, but there is a note titled, These Mannequins, which reads, I can't wait to drop these damn mannequins off. The crew is starting to claim they are hearing weird noises from the cargo. Maybe they are just playing pranks on me. Whatever, we are almost there. So we have a pre-war boat delivering mannequins, the crew claiming they heard strange noises coming from the cargo. After that, the crew died and the mannequins were placed all over the ship, with one staged as the murderer. Trying to make sense of this from a rational perspective has led me to believe one or more crew member was not who they said they were. And I have two theories as to who they could be. The first is criminals smuggling gold. Inside one of the shipping containers oh, is a coffin. Yeah. Inside the coffin is a mannequin and two gold bars. The crew heard the smuggler or smugglers checking on their stash, and there's a good chance that after hearing strange noises a few more times, they went to investigate and caught him or them in the act. After which a fight ensued and the ship sank along with the gold. But that doesn't really explain why the mannequins have moved around. So I propose the imposter, if you will, was a serial killer. The captain believed he was being pranked when in reality, the killer was moving the mannequins into position, which is eerily similar to what the Fens Phantom did, a prolific serial killer living in Boston before the Great War. Good point. This killing could have been the Fens Phantom. We know he used props and mannequins certainly count as props, Perhaps this particular mannequin is a stand-in for the Fens Phantom, who killed the captain with a wooden board. As for the Chalk X, that wouldn't survive being submerged in water and has since been washed away. As for True the killer, enough. they swam to shore before making their way to Boston. 
The only other theory is the mannequins really did have a mind of their own. No survivor would go through the trouble of staging this, so the only other reason is the mannequins are alive and they didn't want to stand around being gawked at by shoppers. So before making it to shore, they killed the crew and sunk the ship. There's a Twilight episode uh, where the mannequins were alive. Like uh, when the store closed, one of them uh, was allowed to um, leave the store uh, and go mingle with the, uh, with the, the normal people. Ship. But if that really is what happened, then why don't they react to the player? Well, some of them do. When you first arrive, several of the mannequins float to the surface and drift away, almost as if they're fleeing the scene of the crime. Ah. All jokes aside, these mannequins aren't alive. That's not to say Fallout doesn't have other strange occurrences concerning mannequins. In the Warren Theatre, there's a group of mannequins acting out a performance. Yep. But one of these things is not like the other, for at the back is a synth strider pretending to be a mannequin. Yep. Naturally, if you get too close or attack from a distance, the synth will fight back. To most people, a mannequin is just an object. It's not a creature, it's not a danger, and there's a very good chance that people will simply look, realize it's not a person, and go about their day. And that's what the synth was hoping for. The synth understood what mannequins are to humans, and it understood it looked similar enough to blend in. And that's really scary, because either the synth learned to do that, or the Institute programmed it to do it, meaning there could be more. Either way, we know the Institute uses crows, Brahmin, and Gen 3 synths to spy yes, on the they Commonwealth. Do. And maybe, just maybe, they did the same with mannequins. At first, it was just cameras and microphones, but in time, they had them moving around, following people through buildings, and watching oh, that's from the creepy windows, as fuck. all to get a better view. Only these mannequin-type robots were unreliable. They broke down, stayed in place, and that's why what we perceive as mannequins are found in such strange locations. Another explanation for mannequins moving around is the most far-fetched, but my personal favourite. Spirits exist in Fallout, that's irrefutable. Yeah, that they're possessed. We see and talk to a ghost in Fallout 2, and we can also hear ghosts in Fallout New Vegas. Mm -hmm. So, what if the mannequins found in strange places are actually the spirits of those who died during the Great War? Without a body of their own, they possessed the nearest human-like thing they could find, mannequins. Those still clinging to life continued as normal. They went to work, had lunch, met with their friends, and went home, just like they would have done back when they were alive. Over the years, they realized they were dead, and their spirits moved on but the mannequins were left in their last location. Though in the end, it really could be a combination of theories. Survivors trying to stave off loneliness, raiders setting traps, pre-war killers creating art, the Institute spying on people, and spirits going about their day-to-day -day lives. Regardless of the reason, this All of these things at the same time. used to display clothes is now usually a sign of something much more disturbing. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you'd like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, that that's um, everything about the mannequins in Fallout 4. <clears throat> um, they are rather fucking creepy. You can find them all over the place. Um, I would like to think uh, that it's... Um, I would like to think that it was it's all of those things that he mentioned, uh, whether they be some possessions um, or um, the very likely possibility that they're all spy cameras. Um, um, but... But those uh, those mannequins are from, I believe, from before the war. So uh, maybe it's just uh, uh, our brains playing tricks on us most of the time. And it's just raiders setting traps and our uh, serial killers setting 
uh, uh, of ghoulish um, art exhibits uh, like the Fence Phantom. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think uh, the most likely um, uh, explanation for the mechanic uh, ma uh, ma uh, mannequins is. Damn. Um, but uh, that is uh, the end of uh, uh, the night for us tonight. Um, I hope you had a good time. Um, I hope you have a good week. Um, I'll be streaming later this week, uh, off and on. So, um, I'll, um, uh, I'll see you soon. Um, be safe, be happy, be healthy. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next one.